want you to test yourself here. And I want you right now to get up off the couch and go over and find a chair. I want you to put both hands on top of the chair, put your right foot forward, bring your left knee flush up against your right heel, curl that back foot, the left foot under, just like I'm doing here. Don't keep the foot this way, okay? Put it up here. Now just stand up and flatten the back foot. Here's the secret. I want you to keep this right knee as tight as you possibly can. Do not bend it and do not ever bend it throughout this test. Now, keeping the right knee flexed, I want you to start walking down the chair as far as you can go. If you're like the majority of amateurs, and I've tested thousands, scores of thousands of, uh, of, of people, frankly, most people just get somewhere about in here and you'll start to feel that big time right behind your knee. Do not let the, bend, the knee bend. And probably four out of five people, if not more, when I test them, I tell them I'm emphatic. Do not bend the knee and almost invariably they'll see me go down here and they'll bend the knee. That is cheating. I don't want you to cheat. To get an effective read and test on yourself, just go wherever your limit is and test it right there. If you can get your fingertips to brush the ground, you have superb functional hamstrings. If you get somewhere maybe back down in about in here, not too bad, but if you're somewhere up in here or even on this part of the chair, you are tighter than a tom-tom drum, not good. And I will guarantee you, if you flunk this test, you're gonna be pretty much lose, guaranteed to lose your stability all over the place. Now, I've been fortunate to work with close to 100 tour players, a lot of Hall of Famers in there too, and I've tested every one of them, not to mention hundreds of fine amateurs and young uh, upstart tour players, et cetera, on many tours. And it's amazing how many, when I, for the first few years I got into this, I would see tour players that would fail my hamstring test, and yet they could keep that right leg nice and flush without straightening them. And I couldn't figure that out for a while, then finally I realized why. If they're able, with a tight hamstring, to keep the right knee flex and keep stability and balance on the right foot, they will almost all, despite the tight hamstring, they will almost invariably have tight hip flexors. So in other words, the restriction of the hamstring may not show up in the leg, but it will show up in the hips. We want to have a nice load here in the right side and keep those hips nice and stable. Now, so now you're probably thinking, okay, well, I'll just stretch my hamstring to fix the hamstring. So that's, most people would deduct that, okay? In other words, a tight hamstring I know, I'll just do tight, I'll, I'll just do hamstring stretches. It doesn't work like that. Because if you have a tight hamstring, I assure you, you're gonna have a tight quadricep and you're gonna have a tight AB ductor out here and you're gonna have a tight adductor in here and you're gonna have a tight hip flexor in here and you're gonna have a weak glute here. If you want to complete, if you wanna really flex, get your hamstrings loosened up, you have to work all of the muscles in, the, in those, the major body parts in the lower body there. So we have to do hamstring stretches like this or like there, we have to do AD ductor or inner thigh stretches here coming down there, or we have to do quadricep stretches like here and work out the quad once I get my balance in there. We have to do hip flexor stretches. You want to work all of the muscles in that body part, okay? The same thing with the chest. If you have a tight rounded shoulders chest here, you have not only just to do stretches for your chest, but you got to strengthen your back, your lats in here, um, all the muscle, the body is one incredible working machine and every single part of the, every muscle in the body affects another muscle. So that's why we have to balance the whole system there, okay? Not to tout it, but my DVDs cover all this so we hit all of the main body parts in the sequence there. So again, test yourself and if you go, take my flexibility test, you will see all the tests in there and you'll be able to have a good uh, determination and understand exactly why you do what you do in your golf swing. Remember, your golf swing is only a symptom of how your body functions, all right? And again, one of my favorite stories is if I give a golf lesson and give the same lesson to a 93-year-old man and give another lesson to Tiger Woods, which one is going to be probably get the most benefit? Well, 
I think Tiger's going to hit the ball a bit further. Why? Because the older gentleman just simply doesn't have the range of motion or strength or, or endurance that the young person has. That's the bad news. The good news is that they can greatly improve it. So again, get your body flexible, get your body strong and functional, and your golf game will reciprocate in the same way.